Hello, everybody. Um, so whereas before we were talking specifically about taxes and the different types of taxes, all right, today we're going to start looking at things on a larger scale. All right, um, as before, we talked about how the government uses taxes, or, ta or how the government taxes people in order to make revenue, and they use that money and spend it for public goods. So this overall theme that we're gonna look at is called fiscal policy. When you think about uh, fiscal, think of financial. It's the financial policy of our government, how they collect taxes, how they spend money, and what their goals are for doing this. All right, so uh, we also call these uh, expenditures, ways that we spend money. Expenditures are ways we spend money. You might also see it as outlays. Generally, we'll see it as expenditures, though. So the government takes in money via taxes and then spends it in a lot of different areas. And so what we'll look at is how the government tries to influence our economy by doing this. All right, so first off, the way that they spend money is through this federal budget. So this federal budget is usually signed off in October. Right now, they're trying to decide our federal budget for next year. All right, so they, they set that budget at the beginning of the year because if it's not in the budget, then the money doesn't get spent. All right, so twice in y'all's lifetime, you might have seen the government shut down. All right, the first time was about two or three years ago. <clears throat> I think it was about two years ago. Um, and the government shut down because in the fiscal budget that was passed, there was no money to include a border wall. And so Donald Trump said that he would refuse to sign this, this bill or this uh, budget into law if it didn't include money uh, for this new border wall. And so because of the House of Representatives refused to include that in their budget, the bill didn't get passed. And so our government shut down for about a month or so. Or maybe it was even closer to two months. So Flutzy closed down, national parks closed down. Uh, so if it's not in this budget, then the money doesn't get spent. Another time where you might remember the government shutting down was back in like 2010, I think it was. All right, uh, no, maybe it was 11. All right, and that was because the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate refused to pass a bill that included money for Obamacare in it. Obamacare was a law, but the House and Senate refused to allocate any money for it. And so Barack Obama said the same thing that Trump did, that I'm going to refuse to sign this budget into law unless you include this money for Obamacare. Since the House and uh, Senate refused to add it, the government ended up shutting down for a couple weeks. And so this federal government is just a laundry list of exactly how the government is going to spend money. If it's not in that budget, then the money doesn't get spent. All right, and so this is just kind of looking at the, the specifics here. Um, usually the, the budget is passed October 1st. However, it very, very rarely does get passed by that time. As long as it gets passed by January 1st, uh, then they're really in good shape. Usually it takes them an extra month or a month and a half to kind of do some negotiating, right? The, the House of, or, uh, in the House and the Senate, you know, it's split almost evenly between Republicans and Democrats. So they have to kind of negotiate of what they want included in this bill. Especially since right now the House is controlled by Democrats and the Senate is controlled by Republicans, they really have to kind of negotiate on these things. So yeah, our budget for 2021 isn't, isn't passed yet, I don't believe. All right, and so uh, a lot of people get these two terms, debt and deficit, mixed up. All right, so an easy way to think about it. Um, oh, sorry, I don't know why I skipped there. I might just be on a timer. Hold on. An easy way to think about debt and deficit <clears throat> is to think about whenever I was in college. So we'll look at 2014 and 2014. Uh, so let's look at the money that I made and the money that I spent. All right, so these two years I was doing my master's program. So the first year uh, I worked as a front desk clerk at a hotel, all right, and I made about $10,000. All right, but between my wife and I, we spent about $50,000. Right? Some of that was on my master's degree, some of that was on our law school, which is really expensive. All right, so we spent $50,000. All right, so uh, 2014 was my first year as a teacher. All right, I made about $35,000. All 
And again, we spent about $50,000. I was still finishing up my master's. She was still finishing up law school. All right, and so let's look at the deficit to start out with. So in 2013, we made 10,000 and spent 50,000. That means we are $40,000 in the hole. Our deficit for that year was $40,000. 2014, I still made less than we spent, right? We spent uh, $15,000 more than we made. So my deficit for 2014 was $15,000. All right, debt is looking at the total now. So we owed 40,000. We owed 15,000 more, and so my debt by the end of college was $55,000. So deficit is looking at a specific year and how much more you're spending than you're making. Debt is looking at the total amount. So our total national debt right now is $27 trillion. All right, four trillion of that was added this year because this year so far we have spent four trillion dollars more than we've made. So that deficit adds on to the debt. All right, so now let's look at um, how the federal government uses fiscal policy. All right, so fiscal policy is the, the manipulation of taxes and government spending in order to help our economy grow or to slow it down. All right, so if we're looking at an expansionary policy, all right, the goal of the, or, of the federal government is to make our economy expand. If you're thinking back to that business cycle, right, we got GDP over time, All right, our economy expands, and then we hit the peak, and then it contracts, and we hit the trough. Then it expands, and then we peak, and then it contracts, and so on and so forth. All right, so right now, the goal of our federal government is to stop this contraction and to get our economy growing again. All right, and so the two big tools that they have in order to do this are our taxes and our government spending. All right, so what we've seen over the past couple uh, past couple months as the Federal Reserve is trying to deal with this uh, this uh, recession that we're in. All right, what we've seen is that they've definitely increased government spending. Right, think about the stimulus checks that your family may have gotten. The goal there is to put more money into circulation to get our economy growing again. At the same time, the government has cut back on taxes. So these payroll taxes that you've had taken out of your paycheck, if you've gotten a paycheck before, like federal income tax, state income tax, Medicare, Social Security, all right, uh, some employers have been given the option to put those on hold, which means that you don't have to pay those taxes now, you can pay them later on, all right? And so the government has cut back on taxes, that way we all receive more money in our paychecks so we can buy those important things that we need. By cutting back on taxes and increasing spending, it helps our economy grow. Because if you think back to our equation for GDP, right, so remember when we include GDP, all right, we're looking at all of the spending within our economy, the consumer spending, the government spending, the business investments, uh, and then the exports minus imports. All right, so right now, consumer spending's going down and business investment's going down. New, fewer new businesses are opening up, people are saving money rather than spending money, and so what the government's trying to do is A, uh, increase government spending, they're giving people those stimulus checks, all right, and B, they're trying to increase consumer spending and business investments. By lowering down the taxes of businesses and individuals, that means that they're gonna have more money. When they have more money, they spend more money. And so the goal right now that the government's trying to do is lower down taxes and increase that government spending. However, the downside though is that if the government is making less money and spending more money, then that's gonna increase our national debt. That's gonna make our debt even worse. So the big time that the government would wanna use this expansionary policy is when they're trying to help our economy grow if we're in the middle of a recession or a depression. So with this, you can think about those New Deal programs, and that was, that was the goal there, was to help get our economy to grow again. All right, so you might see this referred to as a stimulus. All right, so Barack Obama had a stimulus package. You saw like all of I-95 under construction. They built new bridges and roads and schools and things like that. Lots of government spending to try to help 
trying to help get things growing. All right, the opposite of this would be uh, what we call a contractionary policy. All right, so the goal of a contractionary policy is to slow down our economy. All right, or uh, it could be to try to tackle our debt. So if we're looking at a, a contractionary policy, what the government is gonna do is they're gonna increase taxes and they're gonna cut back on spending. So the government will increase taxes when they're trying to discourage the use of something. So think about alcohol and cigarettes. The sales tax on these are double because the government wants to discourage the demand for them. All right, so generally, there's only two cases where the government would wanna slow things down a little bit. First off, it's if our economy is growing too fast. Think of it like a water balloon, right? If you fill up a water balloon too quickly, it'll explode. But if you do it nice and slowly, then the water balloon will get bigger and bigger. So the government will use a contractionary policy to slow things down if we're growing too fast or if our debt is getting out of control. So if you were to ask me, like Mr. Scully, how do I get rid of all of this debt that I have? I will tell you two things. First off, you need to make more money. Second off, you need to spend less money, right? So for the government, it's no different. If we're using a contractionary policy to try to get rid of debt, we need to either A, raise taxes, or B, cut back on spending, cut back on some programs that we have. All right, now the downside for this is that no politician really wants to do this because then they look like the bad guy, right? If you raise that retirement age, well, now all of the elderly people hate you. Or if you increase taxes, then everybody loses more money. And so these contractionary policies are always really, really unpopular. No one wants to look like the bad guy because then they're not gonna get voted back into office. So a contractionary policy is either used to A, slow down the economy, or B, to try to tackle some of our debt. All right, we're gonna leave it off uh, here for now. If you could go ahead and switch over to the Google Meet, please.